Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue with our conveyor trainer exercises and talk about doing things with timed logic. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. For this video, we are using the conveyor trainer from Industrial Concepts along with our Compact Logics PLC trainer. And we have a video showing how we integrated the two of them together. And in the previous video, we did a basic start-stop conveyor control. And then we segued and talked about what happens on power-up, depending on if you're using output energize or an output latch. We also did some exercises in program flow and online edits. But we may not all be in the same place after that video. So we're actually going to start with a blank program. Actually, it's the program from the wiring exercise where we mainly just documented what the inputs and the outputs are. That way we can all get to the same spot. So I'm going to bring down a new rung and then we're going to bring down an output energize and look at local colon one colon i dot data dot eight. And that's gonna be our green start button. And then we're gonna bring a branch down. We'll just drag the button in the middle of it. And in the lower part of the branch, we are going to bring in and examine it on. And this time we're gonna look at local colon one colon o dot data dot zero and that's going to be our conveyor motor and they're going to bring down another examine on and look at local colon one colon i dot data dot nine and that is going to be our red button and finally we're going to have an output energize of local colon one colon o dot data dot zero. So that is really where we ended up at with our start stop program before we started all the other segues. So you can check it out and see how exactly this worked. And now what we're gonna do for this one is we're going to make it that when it sees this sensor, we're actually gonna program a time delay to use this pusher to push it off. Now, some of you are probably asking, well, why would you do that? Let's, let's kick that can down the road towards the end of the video. Mainly right now, let's just talk about how we would do it. So first, we're gonna see this sensor, and then we know we want some type of delay, and then we want to eject the part. So we know that we wanna look at the sensor and start a timer. So let's do that. So we're gonna bring down a new rung, and we're gonna bring down an examine on. And we're going to look at the shiny sensor. Now, I called it the shiny sensor, and a few people have already said, you should have called that the aluminum sensor or the inductive sensor. Well, I mean, I was just trying to make it really simple, guys. Shiny sensor, black sensor, shiny part, black part. But yes, this is an aluminum part, and this is a plastic part. Also, these are called pucks, and I called them parts. Now, you can call them widgets. You can call them whatever you want. But for me, I'm going to stick with, yeah, this is the shiny part and yeah, this is the black part. Shiny part sensor is local colon one colon I dot data dot one. So that is our shiny part present. And then we're going to bring down a timer. So let's go to our timer tab and bring down a TON. And we're just going to call that our part eject delay. And we'll need to create that. So right click it, new part eject delay, and it's going to be a timer. And honestly, I have no idea what to put this at. So I'm just going to throw a thousand for a thousand milliseconds in it. And we're going to download this. And no, this is not going to work. We're just going to walk through, one, what a lot of people think, and then how we need to handle it. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers or anything like that, just look down in the description. We have lessons for all of those things. So to recap from last video, we hit the green button, conveyor starts. We hit the red button, the conveyor stops. And now we've added a wrong to time our shiny pusher. And I see this done very often. So we're gonna hit the green button again. And we're gonna drop our shiny pusher in. 
And you saw it kind of blip there for just a second. Let's stick that on there again. You see the blip, you saw the time go up, but just like we had to seal in our green button with our motor contact, we need to seal in that we've seen our part to continue that timing. And we could do that with the timer timing bet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our program and you can either do this offline or online, whichever you prefer, is I'm going to add a branch here. And then I'm going to add an examine if on, and I'm gonna look at this part eject delay and at the end, I'm going to put .tt, and let's download that and see what it does. So now, we'll hit our green button to get our conveyor going again, and we'll put our part here, and mainly, we see it going all the way up now to 1,000 instead of where we were going only for that little blip of time that was over the sensor. Now, first, it doesn't look like my time is really good, but let's get back to that. Let's talk about what we can do next, because next, what we want to do is we want to eject our black pusher after that timer's done. So let's talk about what I'll see people do, is next we'll add a new rung, and now I want to look at this part eject delay done bit, because that means our timer is done. And we have lessons on the basics of timers if you need any help with that. So we're going to add an examine on, and we're going to look at the part eject delay dot dn. And then I'm going to put an output energize. And we're going to look at local colon one colon o dot data dot two. And that is our black pusher solenoid. So we'll add this to it and we'll start it back up. And nothing happens. So they'll contact me and be like, hey, I put something in there to make my pusher go out after a time delay, but I never see anything happen on the screen. Well, we've been through this exercise many times before, is the moment that this timer is done, it is going to drop out that TT bit. So the next time it scans, this is going to be false. And that's going to make our dumb bit false. But we did get a trigger off of it for one single scan. So we're going to do the same thing. Just so we see what happens here is we are going to add a branch right here. And then we are going to put an examine on instruction. And we are going to look at this black pusher solenoid to seal this in just like we sealed this timer in with the timer timing bit. Now again, you're going to have to follow me through this video because this is not going to work. We're walking through it step by step to figure out a way we could do it. Is now let's look at local colon one colon o dot data dot two. Okay, now we're going to have to pay attention here because we're only going to get one shot at this. So, one, pay attention to this pusher and our time. So, it's going to be about one second later, which is somewhere in here, actually. You're going to see this pusher go out. So, we hit the start button. Put this down. About one second. All right. Now, the pusher goes out. Now, I'm going to hit the stop button on this. Now, notice the pusher is not going back. But mainly... Yeah, we have a signal that made it come out now. And now we need to make it retract again, don't we? So let's look one at what happened here in our program. So we did see that part eject delay done for a single scan that energized our black solenoid pusher. And then we sealed it in with that. Now there's no way to unseal it right now. Just like up here on our conveyor, we had a seal in of this conveyor motor. But in this case, we have the red button to stop the conveyor. Well, we need the same thing down here. So we're going to go down here and we're going to add a timer. So we're going to edit this rung. And then mostly we've been putting branches over here on the left side. Well, this time we're going to put a branch over here. And then let's go to our timer tab and bring down a TON. Now we don't actually have to do this in a branch in Studio 5000. You could just put this here 
and just delete that. I usually use the branches because if somebody's more used to another software, such as RS Logix 500, you can't do that inline thing. So I usually will use a branch just so it doesn't confuse them. And let's create a tag for this one. So let's say, well, what do we want to call this? We want to call this the black pusher extended. And we're going to create that tag and it'll come up as a timer. And again, I don't know how long it needs to be for. So let's just put in 2000, which will be two seconds. Now, after two seconds, we want this to stop. So exactly the same as we had this red button up here to stop our conveyor, we're going to put one right here to turn our solenoid off. So we're gonna to go to our favorites tab or you can go to your bits tab. Either one probably has it. We're gonna look though for an examine off. And we're gonna look at the black pusher extended dot DN. And let's go ahead and download this and see how it works. Okay, and as soon as we download it, you notice that retracted back. But all right, so I'm gonna put my part right back there. We're gonna hit the green button. Okay, and it did extend. All right, and it retracted. Now, my timing is definitely off though. So I gotta work on my timing. It looked like it came out about halfway in between the two. So let's make our part eject delay 2000 for two seconds. And one, I'm gonna go ahead and get these out of the way because we're only gonna use the shiny pushers right now. So we'll hit the start button, drop our part in. Ooh, looking good. All right, I think we got this. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong part. So there though, you notice this sensor didn't pick up the black part because it's not inductive. We have to use our shiny parts. So we'll drop that back in. But let's talk about a few issues with our setup. So yeah, it works great for one part. But the one, look how much delay we have there. Now we could probably tune that out, but let's say we shorten that and we decide we only need a half a second. Well, what happens when the cylinder starts binding up a little bit or our air pressure drops? We have sensors here that we can run off of. And that's the advantage of running off of a sensor is that we can run, extend, and yep, we're there. We can retract. Yep, we're back there. We're ready for another one. Whereas with time, we say it should take about this long. And yeah, we should be able to retract about this long. And I guess we're right, as long as it's a perfect world. And that's what I see a lot of people do when they're starting out is, you know, Sensors are expensive, you know, um, you know, you can, you can easily be looking several hundred dollars per sensor and okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, there's $600. I can do all this with one sensor in time. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let's talk about one other issue with the distance here and using time is what if I drop a part and I come right behind and drop another part? It's only going to catch that first part couple takeaways. One, there, there's a good example of doing some really basic timed logic. But also, I hope you see that timed logic may or may not be the best thing for your application. So in our next video, we're going to continue working with this program. We're going to improve it by using the actual switches that are here. So we're no longer going to use two seconds out and then retract. We're going to go switch to switch. And here, we'll obviously move this to this one because then we can run two different products on the same conveyor. So if this video has been helpful, till next time. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.